To start today's conversation, I'm going to give you a little bit of context about art school in Denton, Texas in the early 1990s. There was no such thing as any kind of interdisciplinary studies. There was only painting and drawing, sculpture, printmaking, ceramics, I'm probably forgetting something, but everything was in its proper order, sorted by medium and nothing else. And from that place emerged a weird sort of duality in which artists who defined and identified as painters versus conceptual artists were sometimes at each other's throats. And it really wasn't that dramatic, except when it was that dramatic. And yes, it seems really, really, really silly now, but know people so today I am talking to Chris Kaiser who was an art school peer of mine and we were in opposing camps and it felt really good to talk to him about some of those experiences and um, the climate in general at that time and I will say that for me I think there was it definitely kind of a healing effect that went on um I'll let you listen in and see what that's all about. But as far as cultivating peace goes, the title of this episode, um, you know, there's the revisiting this old stuff and putting to rest any lingering BS that's been there. But also we live in a world where... um, Peace is desperately needed, and I think that when we can address it on individual levels, it helps us to to meet it in the world at broader scales, hopefully. So, all that said, there's some good stuff in here. Um, Just a couple of contextual things. We talk about the hybrid art forms class a lot. That was a class that was started by Vernon Fisher, who was kind of the art star professor while we were there. And it was intended to address the silo effect. And um, for better or worse, if you're interested in that in particular and in uh, Vernon, then there's going to be another talk with Aaron Baker coming out uh, in April. So stay tuned for that. We go into it even more deeply. And, um, I was a founding member of an art collective in, in Denton called good, bad art collective. And we talk about that a lot too. So just so you know what that, when we mention good, bad, that's what we're talking about. And, um, on top of that, Chris got a mention in the Rick Rubin podcast interview with Owen Wilson. And so he expands on that story and we loop it back to the whole art school education conversation because it actually made sense to do so. And then others of you may recognize his work from the Silver Jews American Water album cover. And in 2023, it was the 25th anniversary of that. And so... Um, He had a lot of activity around that, and we talk about that and the origins and that connection for him. And then um, just go into, like, art and painting and um, being in nature and, like, how we're cultivating peace in our own lives. And it was just a really, really, really nice conversation, and I so enjoyed reconnecting with him, and I hope that you enjoy this as well. Last time I saw you, you had very short hair. Yeah, it goes back and forth. It's yeah. always gone back and forth. So um, I feel like, you know, just six months ago, if I had, if future Lisa had told past Lisa that I'd be talking to you on Zoom, I'd just be like, really? Why? You yeah. know? <laughs> totally. Yeah. totally. Uh, and I'm so excited. Um, yeah. Well, it's total old school day. I mean, it's like, uh, this is, you know, the 90s revisited so yeah. and then all 
between two, but man. Yeah. Well, about social media is, I mean, I've got, I'm now, you know, have been able to reconnect with everybody, you know, from Denton, from Arts Magnet in Dallas, St. Uh -huh. Mark's before that, Museum School, New York, everywhere. So cool. that's crazy. crazy. But it might have been like a 10 year, 10 to, or a one year to 30, 40 year gap since some people. So, so this project has been, um, really fun for me to to both kind of get to know new people a little mm -hmm. more, but also reconnecting with with people from my past and yeah. so actually that's kind of how I'm starting out this new year it's mostly me going back to um quite a few people from the Denton era actually that I have kind of lined up to talk to and um I mean i I remember you always being around and mm -hmm. I remember talk, like talking to you, but we never really hung out and yeah. never had a lot of shared experience. So I don't mm -hmm. feel like, even though I knew you, yeah. I never really got to know you. Yeah. 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 So, um, so this is kind of like an added layer of, of, you know, reward in that I yeah. get to finally get to know you a little better. Excellent. Sure. Yeah, I mean, it's just um, what I remember. Well, I remember a lot of things about Denton, but you were uh, it was kind of a good bad art collective. Yeah, uh, and we were all kind of more. You know, we're getting into more of our upper level art. You know, almost graduating. Everybody's getting real serious about it, and then kind of the good bad thing. And um, there was a, uh, and then kind of you know hybrid art forms with the Vernon Fisher, and then you kind of had your uh painting anti-painting factions and all that and and it was really it's actually really fun kind of a lot of debate and uh all that you know everybody had their stances and and um so it's just it kind of made it really exciting i think back then we took it almost too seriously but you know whatever side we we're on and we just you know cause, you know and this is all in retrospect now it's kind of yeah. you know what i mean now you can kind of even kind of glorify it but it's kind of like uh, we were also passionate about our stances and right. the debate and everything but it really made a uh, very high level art discourse and production and just everything you know yeah. so that was cool and yeah. I remember so like I was painting and you know there was the painting and then the anti-painting conceptual and my deal was I wanted to be in both of those camps I wanted to be like the conceptual painter Right. But I was still being typecast as the dumb painter because it was painting versus conceptual art, right. you know, you know yeah. kind of thing. So I kind of hovered around all of it, you know, yeah. I felt. And uh, I wanted to be, you know, smart too, like the conceptual people and all that. Yeah. But uh, And yeah, I just I was, got disgusted with the whole thing, honestly. Yes, well, I, I did. did. Kind of, I was kind of like, you know, yeah, I'm a painter. That's what I do. I who, And now, what, uh, you know, back then also, like art theory and philosophy that was all like so in mm -hmm. and now it's just not I mean it, you know what I mean it's just really like um you just make your art and like what you do and hope other people like it and but then it was all about you know defending it and who was reading what you know philosophers and how much you could quote and yeah oh, it was crazy it was crazy but yeah. now it's like now it's just who even cares anymore you know and, I mean is that just a symptom of art school I haven't I mean it's I been so it long be. since I've been connected to art school I don't know what it's like now for people yeah I what I have heard honestly is um okay like when we were going it, it was a seriously heavy dialogue like let's be theoretical and critical mm -hmm. and they don't what I hear is they don't do that as much anymore really? and, and how they don't people uh don't want to get their feelings hurt anymore and it's much more PC um and this is even this is people I've talked to that went to North Texas you know well after us more in the you know yeah. 2005s or you know that they're like yeah I, I wanted to actually lay into this person but you can't really do that anymore and so it's a little more uh PC Healthy? and all well, let's use the word healthy <laughs> it is more healthy, actually. like because i i don't really think laying it's into people healthy. is productive you know it's not. it's not um and 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 that's honestly kind of what what 
got me to the point where I, I just was done with it. Like I yeah. stopped making art for like 20 years wow. and I didn't even go to a, a, an art show for like five years after I graduated. I just I wanted nothing to do with it. Oh, wow. Um, so I've, I've only returned to it since like 2016 and I didn't intend to, it just uh -huh. all of a sudden became a compulsion, you know? Uh -huh. And I well, was like, Oh yeah, yeah, I forgot. I love this, you know? Yes. Yes. Um, even if you take long breaks, I mean, yeah. Sometimes I'm like, okay, I'm not going to paint. I need to stop. I'm sick of it. I'm burnt. And not, not even because anyone's met just like I'm personally, because when I paint, I get so into it. I don't want to have to think about anything else. And I just get very, and it gets real intense and I get yeah. too intense. And I'm like, man, I, I got to just not paint for a while. And, uh, but you always still have to keep doing it. It always, even if it's been a year, 20 years, you know, whatever, it just uh, kind of always comes back and all that. So yeah, it's crazy. You posted back in December on Facebook, the, the link to the Rick Rubin uh, podcast yes. interview with Owen Wilson. And the, yeah. you got a mention in there. Yeah. I listened to it and, um, and I really enjoyed it. Actually, I was a little surprised how much I, yeah. because yeah. I'm not a big podcast person, sure. um, yeah. but um, it was a really good conversation and they actually, they talk about art quite a bit in there and um and since we're talking about school and it's kind of we're like we're already kind of getting into it um I wanted like I kind of wanted to ask you first I think you should probably describe like what the story was for people because yeah. people won't have listened sure. to it and then and then it it was what uh Owen was saying kind of like leading up to when he used you as an example that I wanted yeah. to ask you about um yeah. So would you mind no, like, that's fine. the story uh, from your, your memory? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I cannot believe he was able to even, that he was even thinking about me and recounting a sp specific story from that far back in, in our lives. Um, but yeah, I went to St. Mark's and uh, Owen and Luke, well, all the Owen brothers went to St. Mark's also. We were all there at the same time. Owen was like, um, well, I think he was a grade behind me and then Luke was two more grades. And, uh, so, you know, we, we grew up together. Uh, they lived right near us in Dallas, uh, right over there. And, uh, I, I liked it because I was like, oh, so actually you did learn your humor and sarcasm for me after all, but, you know, St. Mark's, he was just, he was just, he was kind of funny, kind of a punk, you know, kind of sarcastic, whatever. Um, Luke was cool. Um, but, you know, it was this all boys school and you had these kind of teachers uh, that you, they couldn't kind of like how we're saying the critiques. They could not even behave now the way they did. That was this very dominant male, you know, yeah. out yell you kind of, you know, just, right. oh, man, that was intense. It was very intense. Great education. But these guys, the teachers, they would get they're just so intense and. We get so angry and just and you just had to fall in line and but but you know we're all boys and all that so we couldn't help cutting up and so what he was talking about I think uh, it was like our history class and it was uh, Mr. Bachelor and he was also the baseball coach and he was totally intense and these guys were so serious about sports and coaching and about teaching and they just thought they knew everything and real um, authoritarian you know and everything and I just I I. My whole deal at St. Mark, like my dad taught there, he taught art there, okay. ceramics. So I um, I went there tuition free. We were not as rich as the rest of the kid. You know, he was kind of, you know, faculty. My mom was a teacher. Uh, we had a house in that neighborhood. But, but um, you know, I wasn't like this mega wealthy person like all these other. So I already, already felt like an outsider and all that. So I just, I cut up a lot and got in trouble all the time and embarrassed my dad and I had a big mouth and I was funny and so that I you know Mr. Bachelor that was in the days when they were writing stuff on the chalkboard so what he was saying was every time Mr. Bachelor would turn around I would probably he he said I would do a dance I was probably flipping him off I was probably you know doing that <laughs> making a big scene getting everybody to laugh and then he'd turn around and we'd all stop and then I guess that day he kind of caught me yeah. And, um, you know, and he thought he was Mr. You know, smart guy, you know, the baseball coach. And he's like, 
you know, Mr. Kaiser, in baseball, what happens when you get three strikes? And what, what Owen said that I said is exactly something I would have said. I said, I don't know, sir. I don't follow baseball. So that's, and then got, you know, I spent half of my time at St. Mark's, you know, standing out in the hallway. So, right. <laughs> but I just, um, I couldn't believe he even remembered that. Yeah. Now, really, I haven't seen Owen since, it's been a long, long years, almost maybe a little after St. Mark's bumped into him a little bit, but um, he's, you know, he's gone. I just couldn't believe he even remembered my name. Um, now, Luke, um, Luke was like, one of my dad's kind of ceramic students and they stayed friends for years actually he would come back to the campus and visit my dad and all that and everything yeah, but that's um, nice. yeah I just couldn't believe uh he, he even remembered to tell that because someone in New York was like um I think Owen Wilson just mentioned you in class cut and I'm like what you know and <laughs> it was weird it was it was a trip and I think what they were talking about before that was saying like well I didn't necessarily get much out of the academic part of the education or at St. Mark's but you can just kind of learn from different people yeah, he, he still, Rick, you know Rick uh had asked him you know something like um how how would you how do you think your life would be if you had never gone to school and then that just sort of opened up this whole conversation and and um like one of the things that he was saying that I think it it stuck with me because I've, I've been having this sort of struggle with like school and with my kids and like my mm -hmm. whole, I, you know, I grew up in an education family. And so, and I've worked in educational publishing for 25 years, you know, it's kind of like, I'm sort of in this period of my life where I'm having a, a bit of a reckoning around mm -hmm. that whole system. Sure. And, and so, um, what he said really like struck a chord with me and that in a way like they compared it to to breaking horses like breaking the spirit of children yeah, you yeah. know and like worshiping authority and if you step yeah. out of line if if you're if you're not one of the kids who can easily like slide into that system yeah. of um following the rules and doing what's expected of you then you um, you do end up with your spirit broken, you know. Yeah. And often, yeah. then that has lifelong repercussions because mm -hmm. a lot of those kids like end up being um, poor students, you mm -hmm. know, and then that affects their their careers and you know income mm -hmm. abilities and all like all of it. So mm -hmm. um, it's it's a pretty big topic. Um, and like here, I just revealed to you like art school and it wasn't just art school. It was a lot of the other stuff. It was actually some of the dynamics within good, bad, like, um, you know, like I just stopped making art for 20 years and I wanted to ask you since you were used and as, as the example of like, you know, here's a kid who like totally defied that that you know and just like help myself off. <laughs> like what's your perspective on all of that well i mean also back then uh and i'm not a psychiatrist or a psychologist but that was before they started really paying attention to like add and ad all that kind of stuff and basically i was just hyper and but there it was more like no you're you know I, what, I, what they call label me was a troublemaker and, you know, just I couldn't stay still, but I actually had impulse control and all that. Mm -hmm. But I, maybe because my dad was the art teacher, I just I could not. Uh, and also it was it was hard for me academically there. It was hard for Owen. He didn't even he didn't even finish St. Mark's. I did mm -hmm. not finish either. You know, I switched to Arts Magnet while I uh, I was not invited back after ninth grade. They don't really yeah. expect this letter saying you're not invited back, which is a nice way to say you know you're expelled or you, you know you can't come back but no I just um I was hyper anyways I still am you know I just was such high energy I could not sit still all day long in class and when I kind of you know by the time that story happened that was probably um that was probably ninth grade my last year honestly once I kind of discovered rock and roll and beer and cigarettes and 
you know, some things like that, like eighth, ninth, you know, seventh, eighth, ninth grade and, and like, you know, uh, the doors and Hendrix and start, I was like, that's what I want to be. I want to be like that. And that did not fit into the St. Mark's mold. And I already um, just knew I didn't fit in. So I just think I was just kind of doing whatever I wanted to do. And I just could not, um, they just could not kind of really <laughs> control me or anything. Um, and to them, that was a negative thing, right? Yeah. But then I went to Arts Magnet, it was a high school performing visual arts. Yeah. And I loved it. I finally felt like, oh, this is where I belong. And I did really, you know, had a great, you know, rest of high school and thrived and made really good grades. I mean, I did yeah. terrible at St. Mark's, but anywhere else I could make good grades real easily. So I guess I got a real good education, you know, obviously. But, you know, once I got away from that real strict, you know, kind of thing, um, man, I just blossomed and, you know, all that, but yeah, I just, you know, it was just, it was at uh, St. Mark's and just, you know, when Owen and all that, they, they didn't quite have the tools they kind of do today for uh, different people's learning and, and mm -hmm. stuff like that, you know, yeah. really their, what the, their needs are in this. And, and they're just kind of like, you know, quit mouthing off, go out in the hall. That was pretty much how they handled everything. So, you know. Yeah, maybe kind of, you know, strong and everything and, you know, all that. But, but I just totally rebelled and, and Owen did, too. And I think he obviously respected me for, you know, thought, oh, that, you know, I, I kind of rubbed off on him a little bit. He was able to make a career out of it. And, you know, I chose art. <laughs> I think it was um, North Texas was cool. And they've even changed this because, like, I could not do math growing up whatsoever. Mm -hmm. No, could not no math and um the thing with the uh if you got a bfa at you at north texas or you it was yeah. north texas when i started going maybe even you too and then they switched to unt but a bfa not a ba but the bfa yeah. you did not have to take math science or language yeah more upper le upper level art classes right they did change oh, I, the I, get my degree this way. I will get my college degree this way and you know make my dad <laughs> proud and all that so <laughs> yeah yeah um, yeah, they did change that. It, it happened did, well, yeah. I think I'm a couple of years, but uh, like I, I started in nine, like fall of 90. Uh -huh. so, um, yeah. I feel like that by the time I was a junior, maybe that had changed <laughs> and they were requiring people to take the fine arts people to take math. But, um, I mean, there's part of me at times in my life that, um, that wishes that I had continued to take some math classes like I'm not terrible at it yeah. and there's, there's interest areas that I have that um you know that would have come in handy but at the same time I mean it was really nice back then to not have to to do it in school so yeah I mean you could really it was their art program or what, it was kind of set up like grad school you really could just really focus on your art there it was it was kind of cool I mean you only had to take like English and history as, as required things and just tons of art and really immerse yourself in it and then they you know you probably remember this they really everybody thought they had to go to graduate school mm -hmm. really pushed everybody oh you got to go to graduate school you got to go to Cal Arts or you got to go to New York you know you, you have to you know you won't be yeah. an artist unless you do that and yeah, a lot of pressure to do that, and 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 I did it. I was like, yeah, I want to do it. Um, and uh, it is is this a the 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 graduate art schools are so unbelievably expensive. Yeah, they're not really. They when I went to the museum school in Boston, and it, uh, I was like, uh, North Texas was better. Really, it really was absolutely. Yeah, we had these thing horse stall studios and an old warehouse for the mm -hmm. museum it was, it was terrible yeah, yeah I mean different grad programs are excellent like I want I really want to go to art center you know yeah um, and I got in and everything but I was like well no I better I'll go to Boston because then I'll be by New York and you know kind of do the whole New York thing but yeah the, the it was it was good location wise to be up there. They had a lot of good you know, kind of famous artists coming in and all that. But 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 as a whole, in retrospect, uh, UNT was a great art department. Yeah, but real heavy on the criticism and all that too. I so. mean, I I obviously have some uh, some complaints, but um, yeah, why well, did I, I would have I would have really liked to have had some some instructors who were not all white men 
I, so, I agree. Yeah, yeah, that was um like like there was one woman on the faculty at that time. I never had her. Billy Giles. Yeah, the watercolor yeah. teacher. Yeah. And I had Rob Ertel for watercolor, who was her husband. Mm -hmm. Um they were really good actually. He was great. He's actually like yeah. he is probably, you know, in hindsight you know my favorite of the mm -hmm. teachers that I had even though there were times that we we didn't see eye to eye because he came at it from a very like formal perspective yeah. and I was like I was in the conceptual yeah. camp you know and so we yeah. we we had some like fun conversations around that but they were always so respectful like he never it was yeah. he never like dumped on people and right. they're room for disagreement and dialogue and he also taught technique and how to paint and yes. I don't think anyone else that I had did that you know I, know. They didn't, I did not <laughs> learn to paint there whatsoever yeah. it was just I like probably, here's some yeah. paint go go learn go teach yourself how to do yeah. it you know? no they, it wasn't which is weird because it's a state yeah. college and you think well they kind of and you would think beginning painting they would no yeah uh, that's probably why I kind of did what I did, more abstract stuff, honestly, because I was like, well, I can't, I'm not going to sit here and I like to learn to paint with oils and all that. Um, and then I kind of, oh, I like this abstract technical looking stuff. I can do that, you know, but I mean, which is neat because then you find workarounds, I guess, to, you know, convey what you want to convey. But yeah, that there was no, and, and Millie, she, she taught technique too. I actually was really not someone that would be in to the watercolor because I did want to be Mr. Kind of high art, you know, all that, but, but she was really cool and she did teach me some stuff and she was very supportive and it was an excellent class actually. Yeah. But the department was dominating males and then yeah. so was our collective. Yeah. It, so, like, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was the only, I was one of the, macho art you know it was it was yeah I was one of the founding members and I was the only I was the only female in that group that started it there I just want to quickly interject and give a shout out to Kim Bridwell who came into good bad just like a hot minute after I did there was a group of us in the spring of 93 who were meeting and starting the thing and then by the time we had the first member show Kim was definitely involved in that so Thanks, Kim. There mm -hmm. were some other women later. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, I have some lifelong friends from that mm -hmm. group. I also, there's been some people that I've had some lifelong challenges with. And, yeah. and, and I'm not going to, like, go into any specifics at all. Because, like you yeah. said, it's been 30 years. It's water yeah. under the bridge. And, and recently, like have had some really great conversations with one of those people that, you know, has been really meaningful. Um, but, but absolutely, you know, I will say that I, I, I felt that I struggled as a part of that, you know, like there wasn't, I didn't, I don't think I recognized it at the time that that was part of it. No, like, mm -mm, I know. But, yeah. No. But, you know, it, it, I think now it definitely was. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> so. It was, it's true. It, you yeah. didn't, I didn't at all think these things then. Yeah. I was just like, uh, more like, well, I want to be number one. Look at me. That's yeah. really all I cared about. Um, but now, man, it's just, it's a trip. Yeah. That was, and it was, <laughs> it was good and bad. <laughs> like the name, yeah, I mean, exactly. all that. It ended up being a very appropriate name. It was. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Just so, came out of the blue. So you've also um like since I started following you again and and you know noticing this year was the 25th anniversary of the um Silver Jews American mm -hmm. Waters album and you did the cover art for that. So you've been posting a lot about that and I like you did a round of prints look like and do you want to talk about that a little bit? Because it seems like it's yeah, kind of, yeah, sure. at that's, least that's, right that's, now, has been a big part of like my current thing. That's a big part of my art and really my history. Um, that 
The Silver Jews was a ba is a band. Um, it was formed by a friend of mine, David Berman. Uh, you know, he's a singer and writer. He's a poet. He's done books of poetry. But he's he lived in Dallas, like when I was in high school, <clears throat> and he went to Green Hill. And um, um, I met I so I basically known him since high school, since kind of the underground kind of you know deep Ellum you know scene uh, wow. and all that. And you know, he's a great guy. He's funny he's intelligent uh he was he's one of those kind of uh the the guy you always want to be friends with he thinks really cool he was like a great above me and um so yeah i mean we we kind of were real good friends in high school and everything and then you know and this is you have to preface all this with this is free internet and free cell phone and free social media so you know how like you might be friends with someone and then uh, you might, you know, you go off to college or you move away and you don't hear from them for a few years. And then they go, hey, what's going on? Oh, hey, what's up? You know, it's been like you think it was just the la a day ago you talked to them yeah. and you just kind of pick up years later where you. So that's how our relationship uh, kind of went along. It's like <clears throat> we were friends in high school. Then he went to college and I did my thing. And then I was living in Austin and he was there living in Austin. Um and he had kind of gone to like University of Virginia where he met Steve Malcolmus and Bob, guys in Pavement, yeah. that band. And um, so they were all college friends in, in uh, Virginia. And really it was, and it was Silver Jews was the first band. And it was like with David and Steve Malcolmus. And then Malcolmus went and did Pavement, but they kind of all cross-pollinated. But so, you know, we hung up, we were, then we hung out in Austin and then, then, then a long time went by and I, you know, I was then living in New York and um, he had already kind of been living in New York, in and out of New York and doing all this stuff and doing the silver juice. And, you know, I was very into music, but I had not even really heard of them. They were very underground. Um, I, I was like into pavement, didn't even know, I didn't even know he was in a band, you know, because because there is no social media. I had no way of, you know, but he called me and he's like, hey, um, you know, I'm in town uh, recording a record or something. Or, you know, I'm here recording a record. Yada, yada. And this was 98 or whatever yeah. when he was in American Water in Brooklyn there. And, um, oh, oh, you're in a band. I mean, I seriously, you know, because I was also I was so into the art world and my art I really wasn't even following music but it was just like oh it's my friend Dave from Dallas you know what's up come on by the studio I'm having a little party I had that painting up there in the studio and um so he was there and he, he came with some some people from the Jews and uh, everything but again I didn't wasn't real aware of his music career whatsoever it's kind of funny yeah. but um at one point you know I went off to another part of the party and I came back in this room and he was sitting in a, he was the only one in the room. The painting was on the wall and he was sitting in this chair he had been looking at, but then he fell asleep. He, had, he was asleep on the chair. Cause I think they, they were, you know, they were doing a lot of recording and staying up late. And, and it was just kind of funny. Cause um, then later that summer um, I was at Skowhegan when I went and did that, but he's like, Oh, Hey, that uh, he called me or something. You know, he's like, Hey, that, that painting you had in the studio, uh, could, could we use that for the cover of our album? And I'm like, uh, yeah, sure. That's cool. And again, mm -hmm. I didn't know. I mean, he had only, they'd done two albums before that. They weren't, they were kind of a college rock band or, you know, I didn't really, yeah. it was just like, oh, you're my friend. Of course. Yeah. That, that's cool, dude. Oh, how neat. You know, but I hadn't heard any of the music, nothing. Um, and then, you know, he had me come pick it up and, you know, um, wow, that's really neat. I was not even paid for it. Mm. It was totally, you know, indie underground you know i wasn't paid for it i didn't sign anything um yeah. it was just a favor for a friend he gave me the cd and everything and i'm, I'm going back home and i'm like god i hope i like this yeah some, sometimes like friends bands you're like oh dude but, you know but i was like i i hope i like this so i put it on and i'm like holy shit that's this pretty is great incredible yeah. i was like yeah whoa dude and then i kind of started research i'm like oh okay and but um I I still listen to the album. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's an amazing album. Uh, somehow he knew that image would go perfectly with the album, and it just it didn't have even have a the painting did not have a title at the time. So I was like, okay, I'll name it American Water, and that's not something I did recently. 
to make it perfect. I, it was like back then I was like, that actually would be a great name for the painting. That's what I'm going to do. So that was that. Um, people would be like, oh, I, I saw your album uh, in the window at, you know, on St. Mark's Place. And oh, that's cool. I, I just really did not get the gravity of it at the time. And, and neither did he. And so the, the Jews kind of kept doing their thing and there still wasn't social media and stuff. So I just kind of went off my life. He went on with his and had his issues. And um, I would, I kind of moved back to Texas. And then every now and then someone would email me, hey, um, you're the one that did that cover of American Water. Do you ever like, you know, paint those for people? And I was like, oh yeah, sure. Okay, I'll do that. You know, so I kind of started doing that. Just very, people just kind of found me somehow. Uh, and then social media arrived and and it just kind of, the David Berman and the Silver Jews, just, they got a huge cult following where people like in their twenties love them in high school. It's really yeah. weird. I started under, figuring out more about it and I just, and then, um, you know, we were kind of in touch again and then he kind of, you know, committed suicide in 2019 and that kind of blew it up also, but <clears throat> um, it just that album and him and his music, that's all just grown. Like I, I, he would, it would free, I'm sure it freaks him out, would freak him out. Cause yeah. again, Santa's was like, oh yeah, you can use my picture. That's cool, man, whatever. It's so casual. And now it's this big thing. And, um, and then, um, so yeah, this guy, uh, you know, approached me like, oh, do you want to, you know, kind of do prints? And, we, and that was the, this 25th anniversary, that was the third, you know, print run we did. Um, but so we definitely wanted to do one on the 25th anniversary. We had done two more, you know, right before it kind of, but yeah, I mean, he, uh, has them done in, uh, in Bushwick, very nice, very good quality prints. And, but it's just very weird. Um, after all these years to see how it, what a phenomenon and I have all yeah. these people talking to me all the time of, Oh, tell me about Dave. Tell me about, you know, all this crazy stuff. And yeah. we're like, dude, it was just a casual thing. You know, yeah. but, and then I had to do like a million paintings for people and the prints. And, and it's kind of like, it's also a big thing that at times I wish would then kind of just go away. You know uh -huh. what I mean? Now it's like, that's what people know me for. One yeah. painting I did uh, 25 years ago. Right. Not any other work, <laughs> not anything else I've done. Just that one, which it's cool. It's cool for my ego. It's cool monetarily. Um, I keep doing it. Uh, really to honor David's legacy, really. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I do it. Um, but also it's kind of like, okay, uh, I do other work too. So yeah, has it had the effect at all of bringing, bringing in new people to see like your work beyond that one painting or is it? Pretty uh, yeah, a little, yeah, definitely a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I've had people um, that, well, actually what was really funny what, what's been funny over the years before people just it became very known that I did that image yeah but oh you did that cover I'm like uh -huh. yeah I mean they're like whoa I didn't know that I mean it does say it right there on the record but because because of no social media people don't really look at that kind of stuff yeah, yeah. so many people have been into that cover probably that I've known faced it that didn't even know I did it you know so that that's been kind of weird but um, yeah, it's, it's helped but people like, you know, see all my work and, you know, that kind of thing. But, but it's like, if I do a post on social media about American water or with American water image or anything related to that or David Berman, it's going to get hundreds and hundreds of likes yeah. guaranteed Yeah, because our life is an algorithm now. I mean, it, it's like right. that. I almost yeah. feel like, oh, I could just post something American water and it's going to, you know. Uh, my other work gets a good amount of likes and, you know, and all that, but that's the thing that, but yeah, I, I mean, like to get mad at that, but then I can be like, well, I guess I did one cool thing in my life, you know, yeah. and that kind of thing, but it's, it's just weird. I mean, it has a, it has a very broad reach as well. And so that's part of it, you know, I mean, um, people who, people who are interested in music uh, vastly outnumber the people who are interested yeah. in the visual arts, you know. Most uh, of my people are music people. Yeah, yeah. Get it and all of that. Yeah. Probably, it's actually more music people than art world people. Yeah. For sure. 
And it's just weird. It was one of the easiest paintings I've ever done. It's just three colors. Well, what's the origins of that painting? Like what, what is that? Um, is it based off of something or is there a story behind it? Oh, I mean, a little bit. I was kind of, um, when I went to, when I moved up to like museum school, Boston and New York, I kind of, I had been doing before that at North Texas, <clears throat> I was doing all this kind of gritted Gerhard Richter, I you, know, abstract, <laughs> you know, stuff, smearing. And, a lot of black. A lot of black and then a color and like a Xerox, you know, all that stuff. And yeah. I always want to revisit that too. I never really do though. But, you know, I was like, okay, I'm going to do different stuff. So then North Texas or uh, museums, then I kind of really, I don't, even though that stuff at North Texas, I mean, it, yes, it's, it's sort of painterly. I, 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 I was really into uh, removal of the artist's hand. Mm -hmm. you know, not, not having a gesture or the artist's hand or anything too romantic, you know, so yeah. my painting became just total hard edge. I was in a lot of hard edge stripes, like I loved Ken Nolan and kind of those color field painters, so I was yeah. incorporating a lot of hard edge and then kind of not when I was in Texas, but not, it wasn't until the, I got to the East Coast, I started really getting into kind of the horizon line and landscape, desert, mm -hmm. seven, super graphics and I think because up there I was very claustrophobic and I kind of missed Texas and the yeah. open which there really isn't that here anymore honestly it's yeah. it, there, there is in yeah. places but but I romanticized that and uh, so I just got into all that so I would do all these kind of you know road perspective things and stripes and you know and that was just uh you know and back then there were no um I mean, I had to use my autograph uh, opaque projector. That was my right. uh, crutch, man. I couldn't freehand anything. Now, everything went on that, but you could not go on the internet and Google like, oh, I need a picture of this. Yeah. It would be like, oh, there's a good picture in a magazine. You cut that out. So it's just a picture of uh, Monument Valley. And I was like, okay, that's cool. And then I think I'm going to do a, a road, like a triangle. I mean, it's the most uh, simplistic, basic thing but it's like I just I got the colors right I got it all it just yeah. uh, worked you know and right. I actually to this I have not I think I've done uh lots of really good paintings you know since then of course but to be able to make just something that simple three colors and just have it work like that I, I wish you could you, you would think that would be easy and it's not it's just That's really not, that kind but, of but, but, that level yeah. of minimalism and and yeah. like nailing that whole sort of uh sense of of like the vastness of the west and uh -huh. the sense of, of like a journey the the, uh -huh. the disappearing road yeah know, the vanishing point yeah yeah, yeah. Um, i mean you named off some things that are like high on my my list of things that i love as far as the west and like being on the road and you know, lands the landscape in general. Um, and that's been something actually that in, in several of these talks, like we've had conversations around landscape. Yeah. Um, so you're kind of coming at that from at least uh, stylistically in a, it's a different, you know, way of approaching that than what I'm doing or like what Scott Winterode is doing or um, some of the other people do you want to talk about like landscape and how that like what it what is that for you like what it, what do you get out of painting landscapes yeah it's it's uh it is really i think i've been painting them for a very very long time kind of unconsciously anyway i think um now it's just more like Yes, I like nature and landscapes, and that's what my art kind of is about. Mm -hmm. But basically, uh, just kind of growing up in Texas, and you do have that, but you don't think about any of that. But we used to go to New Mexico all the time, so uh, to, to see you know the, the mountains and the and the desert there, and the the Royal Gorge, just all these distant kind of images. I just uh, love them, love them. Just I've always really been into that. Uh, the romanticism of it, the, the road, just 
the image of the road and what it entail, what it what it can be. I mean, I just I loved all that, but I never really. I mean, I kind of knew it, but you know, I just it wasn't really like in my art thinking like, oh, I'm gonna be a nature, you know, any of that. It's just, um, but as I got older, I, it's kind of like most of my art is full from images from some kind of nature or landscape, whether it's pictures I take or that I, I uh, that I just lift off the internet or whatever that just fit what I need. But um, it's kind of like when you're younger, you know, you um, you think you know everything and you and you party and you do drugs and you drink and you do all kinds of crazy stuff and it's all to you know to feel good and get somewhere and and now um i i've just kind of really come to realize at my age and this like me and my wife we love hiking we love nature we love to be outside it's kind of the only thing that makes us feel good yeah um, no, drugs and alcohol don't really work anymore. You know, it's just, it's just too old. It doesn't do it. And it's like, uh, you know, we, we, um, we just moved up here to Denison, right on the Oklahoma border. And it's, you know, small town, 25,000. I mean, it's kind of Dallas is coming up here too, but it's still small here and nature. We have a forest right out this window behind us, but we were like, we have to get out of Dallas. It's just too crazy there. And, you know, but when we were living in Dallas, like almost every weekend, we're like driving places and doing these, you know, crazy hikes. And it's yeah. just, it, what's, it's what makes us feel good. And uh, I like to just put that into my paintings, but then I still stylistically paint real hard edge and graphic because, because mm -hmm. I, what my whole deal was, I'm going to, you know, put nature into my filter, you know, for the paintings and that kind of thing. But it's totally the element. It's it's nature and landscape is all I do now. I mean, I can even just say I'm a landscape painter or something, but you yeah. know, it's, it's it. That's it. That's all I care about. Yeah. Here. Well, um, I have a lot of respect for that. Thank you, you know, <laughs> yeah. just, that's all I care about. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. Very much. Well, I'm always thinking, you know, like, oh, I'd love to go back to the 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 Richter stuff I was doing or all this or that. And it's like, I only have limited amount of time and energy anyway. So, you know, what do I, and, and I, whenever I try to go back to some stuff or do something different, it, it never works, honestly. Yeah, yeah. And it's just, I'm just at my best when I am like, it's a really nice image that I'm working with and I'm just doing the hard edge and I just get in that zone and, and just kind of nerd out. But then it is a, it's a, it's a beautiful image yeah. of a place. I feel like that, like sort of returning to, especially that era, like the art school era for us mm -hmm. in the nineties, it's just like, you know, we were who we are, but also vastly different people. Yeah. And the time was very different and you're coming at it, especially, you know, you're in art school, you're learning about all the stuff, like all the people and all the movements and every, all of that. And, and that's seeping into your artwork and it, it just becomes so sort of like, you know, referential about like this art thing and this art thing. And, you yeah, know, you, yeah. you, you've like mentioned quite a few, like Gerhard Richter yeah. and all this stuff. Yeah. And, um, and that's fine. Like there's a place for that, you know, I'm not like being dismissive of that, but I, but that's not I, I feel like it's, it's all very, yeah, it's very externalized. Exactly. And this is like much more just like, um, like the internal sense of peace that you uh -huh. get, got from interacting with nature and you're bringing that into, you know, the art. Yeah. And, uh, and we don't, the, the defend it anymore or being a critique anymore and yeah. um i mean that used to be all i would talk about or you know we talk it's like what does your art reference and it would yeah. be like <laughs> artist are you rep or what you know and it's kind of like now i remember I, vernon fisher used to get so mad i see and that's it you know yeah. don't have to defend it but yeah it just used to be like how many names can you drop and oh right. god it's crazy and i think everybody's just totally past that now and, yeah. and I even know some people in, in Good Bad that were a hardcore conceptualist and then they started painting. I mean, you know, it's just, you know, you just yeah. let it all go. Um, Vernon Fisher used to get so mad when people would use the word reference mm -hmm. in, in that way. Like I'm referencing this 
instead of I'm referring to, um, mm-hmm. yeah, it was, um, I, I just, you said that word and I just like brought all this, all <laughs> these conversations back from hybrid art forms of him yeah. just like going off on that. Um, I mean, also I, I just feel like I, at that point was absorbing a lot of the cynicism that was in that yeah. environment. And I'm, I'm just not a cynical person. I'm not. Yeah. And um, I mean, I, 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 there's definitely things that make me angry in the world and that I, I can see, uh, you know, that there's layers go- going on there that like what's being represented isn't actually what's true. Uh-huh. Um, but, you know, if I'm coming from, from who I am, like, that's not, that's not going to be something that seeps into my artwork you know yeah yeah um, well, so very cynical real cynical and competitive and and it's like i i don't necessarily i hope i'm not the same person i was then because i mean i i was you know uh i was how i was in denton and then basically moved me to new york where it just turns you into like you're on turbo up there and people i mean that's that's why i wanted to go to new york because i was like well I'm really wound up anyway. I'll do per, and I did. I loved New York for a while. You know, I did love it because I was like, oh, this, you know, this is my kind of energy. And, you know, I did go to a very competitive all boys school. So I was raised to be cynical and arrogant and cocky and all that. And it's a defense mechanism and all too, you know, and, um, but that's how I was then. Um, I'm still a little bit like that. I can turn it on at any time, but that's not, you know, now when I look back at how I was like, in the, I'm like, man, I cannot believe I was, because my wife will, she'll just be like, dude, I would not have wanted to be around you. I bet you were just so, and I was like, I kind of was, and just so over the top and just over dumb stuff. But, um, but yeah, New York, I mean, it, it, uh, I just got burned out there. I actually really did. I went up there loving it. Like I will, and you know, a lot of us here in Texas were like, "Oh, we gotta get out of Texas." Mm-hmm. You know, like, I have to get out of Texas. Oh, te-. and um, I mean, I still want to get out of Texas, but it's but Ben, you're like, "Oh, I need to. I'm better than this, and I have to go see the world." And I loved it up there. I was never gonna come back, but but actually, I started. I did start getting real claustrophobic up there, yeah. and um, just like uh, just everything so over the top and I just got sucked into it and burned out and everything. And, um, you know, I would never live there now or anything because I had no uh, peace or serenity there. And I kind of have it here, you know, that's, that's what I helped me realize. Oh, okay. This is who I am. And, and then just getting even older, you know, it's like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it was a, Oh, I was so arrogant and crazy back then uh it's just I hope you know I would not want to be like that but and also at this now it's it's also easy to totally glorify those days and romanticize and like oh it was but it was it was it was it was so just competitive and cutthroat and just crazy you know I mean it's 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 just like any time that you're living with living in is going to have um you know, the good stuff and the the not so good stuff. It's just like, that's just how life is. It doesn't make sense to, to look backwards and, you know, like put, put a time, a certain time up on a pedestal that like, we all yeah. need to sort of um, aspire to being like that again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would want to go back. Definitely. Definitely would want to go back. I would, I would never, I mean, no, because then I'd have to relive my twenties and all of that. Yeah. I mean, like, they, yeah, it was yeah. fun, but I yeah. like, I'm kind of enjoying being in my fifties. Exactly. No, it's, yeah. it's true. It's true. Life begins at 50. That's what they say. But um, <laughs> no, I, I got, I also, I mean, it was like, it was, you know, North Texas was neat, all that. It was all fun, but I had a hard, I had all kinds of bad times then and substance abuse and just all kinds of very complicated hard things to get through in life then that I just I'm so glad I'm you know just kind of past all that and and now I can just you know I've got like a building in the backyard here um I need to it's got the wood paneling like in Denton though it Uh reminds 
that kind of right. Well, I, yeah, I like you. You posted some photos, yes. and I was just like, I, I'm, I'm feeling that. I like I got that. you. That's uh, exactly why I did it. I was like, yeah. only certain people know what this paneling represents, and it represents <laughs> Denton, Texas, in the I mean, 80s and 90s. Like I, I could almost feel it. Like this, just yes. sort of like oiliness of it. That yes, had it been it's like a been clean out here, so it is like that. And you I know what? It, but I, have I don't to. know if you know this, but there was a, I don't know if you, you lived in this house or if we just like hung out there one mm -hmm. time at a party on Hickory street, I think like Bill Feeney lived there. Yeah. maybe. Or, yeah. Yeah. Bill. And yeah. yeah. Like I bought that house. That was, oh that was my first house. Wow. And it was so gross. Like it we did have the panel. We had to like peel wow. stuff and like, Oh I wanted to ask you about like you talked about the removal of the the artist's hand like you've mentioned yeah. that several yeah. times yes and then um you know we're talking about landscapes and like the the peacefulness of being in that and like for for me I, I do a lot of plain air work like yeah which it's I, not, I respect I really do yeah it's not and it, it's it's not very, easy. like it's extremely gestural. It's like all about it, it the has, yeah, it has, yeah, it has to be. And um, I mean, that's only like one piece of the work that I do, but it, and it all kind of informs each other. But um, like the removal of the artist's hand from landscapes is so vastly different than like my approach to it. I just was wondering if you would kind of like what it, what's your what's the attraction uh for you for that. i uh, i first of all i i'm not against the artist's hand whatsoever i yeah. i actually i love all all types of painting and art and and i like a lot of very gestural stuff um mm -hmm. i really do it's more like the reason i do it it's the <laughs> easiest and most direct and best way for me to actually paint or get my ideas across. Um, like I said, I didn't ever <clears throat> really learn to paint. It was just kind of like I figured out what I needed to do for what I wanted, how I wanted to do it. <clears throat> I respect anybody. And I think, you know, gestural stuff and all that, uh, that's actually hard. It's, you know, it's not like, oh, I'm just flinging paint. I mean, it's, right. like, it's, and I don't, you know, you have to be in a very um, peaceful, free kind of, spot to let that happen naturally and not kind of overdo it really yeah. honestly or you know don't want to stop and uh i love all kinds of gestural stuff um plain air painting i love it all this is just what the way i it just this service is the way i paint the best um i'm not when i for some reason i uh, when i've tried to loosen up it, it doesn't it may work but i don't feel like it works good enough or you mm -hmm. know really it ends up being just not how I want it to be. And I think I have to have things um, like I would love to, to do plein air painting and I would actually do it, but not be doing it in a way of like, okay, I'm having to make something really good. It would just be like, I'm going to go because, you know, New Mexico, I would love yeah. to go out there with gouache or whatever. And really, and I've done some of that, you know, uh, just when I decide to do a painting, it gets very like, I have to, you know, do it in photoshop and get it just perfect and then it's just like i'm this nerd trying to get it all you know that, but that's just what i'm so used to doing yeah. and i think also for me on just for me it kind of keeps gives it this keeps it in the kind of contemporary and that's a kind of a dumb thing to say because all art now is contemporary but it still kind of goes back to the warhol or hard edge or you know lichtenstein or you know gary hume all this kind of Mm -hmm. you know there's a bit of control and and, and um um that stuff is like mechanized you know that now that's like 40 years old right which stuff all the the 60s pop art stuff oh yeah that's extremely old but yeah. i felt like what they were doing like like noland and all them they were not they were not doing like pollock flinging the paint they're like we're gonna we're doing abstract art, but we're controlling the paint. They were controlling it, you know, no one with the stripes and Frankenthaler with the, but those are kind of my classic rock artists that I like, you know what I mean? But then, you know, I remember like in, in, in North Texas, you know, we were, I was getting into all the 
80s like uh i didn't really like julian schnabel because i felt like he was he was too messy mm -hmm. he was too schlocky and gestural and messy but i liked like david sally yeah very controlled and um, yeah. you know that, that thing just because of that you know and, and i just david sally back then yeah yeah i had there was definitely some like drawing drawing one era things that i did that were very david sally-esque Oh, yeah, I think he had a huge influence on everybody. Yeah. Uh, I like Laura Owens a lot. You know, I really got into her and yeah. uh, Gary Hume and all these guys. And, um, but yeah, I just, um, I love the gesture in the hand, but if I'm going to, but I have to do everything just so like kind of hard edge and precise, but I, but I like it in my, when I am working on the painting where it's like, well, actually, something else kind of happens and I make that work. So that's always yeah, kind of yeah. nice. It's never exact. I mean, I start with the blueprint, you know, but once I get it up there, I've, I've at least now allow my intuition to kind of take over to just make the painting, you know, yeah. look how it needs to look. Yeah. There's a real emphasis. Like if you're just going to like go back to the elements of design, you know, like there is a real emphasis on shape and color. It's like, yeah. those are the two things uh -huh. that come to the fore in your work that I see, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, and then just composition, you know, um, mm -hmm. balance, symmetry, like all of that kind of stuff that's in there. Like you could, you could absolutely take some of your paintings and teach that stuff very easily. Um, yes. I mean, it's, 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 it is, it's, um, and it's kind of cool now because, you know, again, back to North Texas, and we were almost raised to be theoretical and everything has to be a concept and a theory. Mm -hmm. It what we were not, it was frowned upon, like if you were in hybrid art forms to sit there and start talking about formal elements, yeah, like, yeah. well, the shape and color, how I, they would, if you did that, you weren't allowed to talk like that. So I, I like that was out of my vocabulary forever. Yeah. <clears throat> Just now it's kind of like, yeah, I'm, I'm working with form and color and shapes. Yeah. That's I it. I just feel like. Escape is the vehicle that conveys yeah. that. Yeah. Like there, there, that, that period. And I, I don't know if it was specific to UNT or, you know, if it was more uh, widespread, but I just, it, it was a little bit like throwing the baby out with the bathwater, you know, it was just like, so just like with about were, were really i think unt was really modeling off of like cal arts and yeah. art center and a lot 20. of these a lot of these higher end art schools were really doing the theory and you know all that and that's that's kind of where they were because vernon was there at unt and each you know been showing and he was bringing out that it just it was that was a zeitgeist of the times in yeah. art schools for sure yeah yeah, yeah. But, i mean i spent um you know 25 years as a designer and art director and like I wasn't using those same terms in terms uh -huh. of like elements of design but absolutely that's what it was about but at the same yeah, time you had a, a concept yeah you know, like if you're designing a book cover there's a concept that you are uh -huh. wanting to convey there and like you know what you're talking about with the American water painting is just like distilling it down to the bare essentials. Exactly, yeah. Very challenging everything, and that's the essence. Yeah, yeah. and you yeah. you nailed it there. Yeah. And that's, um, I mean the the album is great, but the like the artwork has definitely had an impact. I think on like the the power of that in our culture and among the people who are are into that um thank you because <laughs> there's a lot of really great album covers out there you know yeah. but that one has like an iconic feel to it mm -hmm. yeah yeah i mean I, I think it does and it was like that's i've always tried to somehow capture that i mean when i'm in, at my best in my painting yeah i've always been trying to cat the iconic just this you get it, you see it, it's an iconic kind of image, you know, um, and it's just so pared down and that is so hard to do, but <clears throat> yeah, color and form and um, like, I don't really know color theory very well. I, um, I get all my color ideas from the paint chips at Home Depot and I'm, I've always been like, okay, I just want 
to just have the strangest colors work together and yeah. um, just I, I can't uh, I sort of know color theory but it's all real trial and error yeah. but for some reason that's my work is always that's been just really... like a mental process yeah yeah you can you can know color theory by just intuitively, intuitively yeah you know and having yeah. an eye for it like you don't mm -hmm. even have to think about it yeah like, yeah that's like color theory is almost mm -hmm. like a, a crutch yeah yeah, yeah. No, I agree um, I, like you know, what works best is is it that's all that yeah. you know matters and so yeah. so I mean you you do you do have an intuitive eye mm -hmm. for it that's in there so um you know I wouldn't fault yourself for for none <laughs> knowing no, no, or I, any of that like myself actually because I'm kind of like yeah I never really learned to academically yeah. paint well or anything so I, but I've been able to figure out these different things and um yeah it's crazy um and you're saying about teaching off my stuff like um my friend uh John Pamara he he used to I did these paintings where I was in, in um I kind of liked it when there wasn't as much technology and stuff because you had to be very DIY DIY and figure stuff out but I was doing these like oh I uh, over I call them overlapping silhouette portraits so I would take I would literally take pictures of friends with a camera uh -huh. and have their head around and all that and then I would develop the photographs and right. then slap those on the projector slap it trace it move it trace it move it trace it and then every you know and it sounds kind of like I kind of miss those days. Art. I mean, so kind of. There were so many steps involved, you know? There were, yeah. Yeah. It, I kind of miss that. No big projector, I felt like I was going to die. I mean, I still have mine from Pearl Paint in Boston in the 90s here, and I, I will uh -huh. never get rid of it. Yeah. But, um, I still have a lot. It forced you to, it forced you to actually be more creative and, and think harder and all that. I mean, it really did, you know? Yeah. It really work work with the images even deeper and stuff but yeah. yeah well I enjoy seeing all your posts of like hiking and you know yeah. up your house and all that it's just like it it just it just feels good it's like that's yeah. like especially when the world is as crazy as it is it's just like it's just nice to see um some peacefulness out there I try to I really um I try to keep it like that I try to keep it positive on there um I I could do all kinds of rants political rants all kind of, I just I I decided at a certain point <clears throat> I'm not going to do that online yeah I'm not going to do that that's not how I want to present myself uh my wife and I can have those conversations and we do I mean we're we are very worried about the world and all that of course and uh, we talk about a lot but I just that's not um and that was, that was the problem with Facebook, really. That's where everybody started just saying so much crap. And then I really liked Instagram. It was more about the images. But now it's like that on Instagram. And I just, yeah. I think all that stuff, but I'm just, I'm not going to, yeah. I'm going to share something that's going to be somewhat, hopefully positive. And I think there's like, there's a balance in there between a healthy dialogue and then just venting, like spiraling out all of yeah. your, your junk. And, yeah. and then like allowing that to to feed into the situation and like because yeah. we we absorb you know that energy and I mean I took a break from Facebook for like two and a half years probably just because yeah. I was just like I can't I can't yeah. this right now and I need to like I just need to control my access I'm just going to be responsible for my emotional state. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Cause it's all, it, yeah. you take it and you see, you can't avoid it. So yeah, you just have to. I, I appreciate that you're, you know, putting out stuff like that, that is just like, I, I like it when your stuff pops up in my feed and it's just like, Oh, I can't, no. you know, Thank you. I know people, I'm, I'm always like, oh, people just think I've gone soft and I'm just like, don't care about anything serious. And it's just like, no, I'm just, that's not, yeah. I'm not going to put it out there and, you know, uh, all that and just keep it, keep it art. And just, yeah, I have my own personal life. I'm very kind of private, personal yeah. person anyway. But I mean, even though I seem crazy and outgoing, I'm, I'm real private and have my own personal life. And I don't, you know, it's just, 
people that put all that out there, it's just, it's weird. It's too much. Well, this has been um, a pleasure. And yeah. Absolutely. I hope we'll like continue having some, some dialogue and connection in whatever way. Yeah. I'd love to love to. Right. Yeah. Like I said, when I saw what you were doing there, I was like, Oh, that's really cool. You're, you are, you're kind of nature and the landscape and all that, bringing that all in and living that and, you know, love all that. And so that's cool. It's really cool. And yeah, definitely. I really enjoyed, you know, reconnecting with you all these years. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's nice.